We all praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Is it working? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. If you turn with me uh, to Romans chapter 8, I just, uh, just want to read this verse. And then I, I want to, I've had a thought for the last couple of days, and I'm going to try and share my thought um, tonight. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take. It shouldn't take that long. But uh, if you turn with me, like I said, to Romans chapter 8, down to verse 19, um, most of the verses that I want to share tonight, and hopefully I can connect them all with where I want to go with this. Um, one of the things that I've been mentioning the last you know, few times we've gotten together is that I want this or this needs to be um, more than just a message. Far too often we'll come in here, we agree, right? And then we walk out and we don't allow the word to change us. We just continue right on in our own ways, attitudes, mindsets. And we need to allow the Holy Ghost and his word to adjust us, to transform us into what he's wanting, what he's after. And the reason I say that is because of this verse right here and, um, and uh, because one of the things that, or one of the verses that uh, I, I've had a thought for the last couple of days that's really stuck in my head and I want to share it. And, and sometimes, you know, like for me, it's really difficult, right? If I have a thought... I mean, I could think about this thought for like two days and then I could read it in like two seconds and we could go home. And the reason for that is, is because like, it's like taking a bite of food and just continually chew on it until you swallow it and it becomes digested, Okay. And then the food becomes, takes its process and becomes a part of your life, right? I mean, if you think about that, right? Let's think about this for a second. I don't care how you get your food, go to the store, hunt fish, do whatever, right? Harvest. You cook it, you eat it raw, you do it whatever, but you put it in the body and it gives you life. It produces, it's totally different than what our makeup is, Right? but it causes us to be able to sustain life, right? And so the word is the same way. It seems like, how is this possible? But if we eat this word, right? Eat this word. Meditate on it. Chew on it. I, I told you this. Um, I, I always remember a message by my dad, I don't know, maybe, you know, 100 years ago, maybe 30 years ago, and it, it was where David said, I meditate on thy word day and night. You know, my brother Tim was telling me that um, uh, Brother Chris at their church, um, uh, he, he was listening to a message, and apparently he shared it at their church, a part of it, or mentioned this and said, yeah, Brother Dale, he says he never listens to the radio. He doesn't turn it on, doesn't listen to music, doesn't do anything. And he says, he just sits there and he talks to the Lord. So he said, one day I tried it. You know, this is what my brother Tim was telling me. And it, it begins to change your mind. That Chris Vega, that, that's who I was talking about and uh, or he was telling me and and the whole thing is is that God desires his word to become manifested in our lives it's just not knowledge where we know to do good but we 
do what we want. I mean, do it not. Right? So, uh, uh, I said all that to, because, like I said, I, I get I get a thought, and I just I can live on that thought for, you know, and just allow it to permeate and seep in, and you know, and, and one of the cool things is like like um, I, I think about this all the time, and and we kind of kind of sing a song that maybe it, it um, just um, you know. Juggled my juggled my memory, and that that was like, it's like, God put us in a time, right? We're in a time where it's day and night. We understand that naturally, but we also understand that spiritually, right? It's day and night at the same time, right? But God's whole desire is to bring forth the light, and that's really where I want to go tonight. That's really what I want to talk about. That watch, oh God, that's such a good thought. See, did you just, did you hear that? That there will be a vast difference between day and night, light and darkness. So much so that there will be no question of what is what. Are you with me? See, a lot of things that we would call light or call, we'd like to, you know, it can just purely be our own knowledge and wisdom brought to us by teaching, right? But just because we've been taught doesn't mean we'll actually, I mean, think about it. Like kids, right? You train them as they grow up and, you know, and you, you tell them, you know, to be respectful and all those kinds of things, but they'll do whatever they want, right? Even though they may know. It's like, it's, it's crazy for people to think that um, no one knows that you're not supposed to kill anyone. So it's not that they don't know. It's what we choose to do, right? So the point of that is, is God's looking for his word to become light and life in our lives. And not just in part, because, you know, that which is in part, it's, it's good. It's good to be in part, okay? But what's better? To be full, Completion, grown up. Amen? So let's read this verse here, verse 19 in Romans chapter 8. For the earnest expectation, okay? The earnest expectation, it, it literally means the intense anticipation, okay? It really means, I mean, it really truly means Look, you and I should be anticipating. You know, I, I mean, it really got into my, my thinking uh, a couple of weeks back about when we talked about in this section here and where the creation groans, but we should groan also, right? And what should make us, do you know why we're in night and day? It's so we'll groan. The darkness will cause us to groan. Right? There's some injustices. There's wrongs that need to be turned to right. And it's darkness to light. And it's all the things that are antichrist needing to become Christ. Amen. And so therefore, you and I, you know, as long as we're caught in the web of the tree of good and we don't ever recognize the evil, we don't realize we're still in the wrong atmosphere or the wrong arena of where God is after. And watch, it's a delicate balance between rejoicing and groaning. It's needing to groan or shine the light, or, or it's needing to um, rejoice and shine the light. Well, there's that groan saying what? Let death be swallowed up by victory, right? Amen. Mortality swallowed up by life. Amen. So look, it's the intense anticipation, the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth, right? It waiteth, it expects fully. 
Like when it says it's waiting for something, like, like if I told you this, look, has God made a promise? Yeah, he has, hasn't he? So look, so the creation is fully expecting, no, oh, let me read. There's an intense anticipation to fully expect what he said to come to pass. I think about this all the time, right? Look, Rome, Romans, Hebrews 11 is a cool chapter. I get the whole faith, but I know most of us like to use faith. We hear the word faith and we think of Pentecostal faith, but the truth of the matter is faith. Look, it says, Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker is God. All he was looking for were people who allowed the word to transform their lives. They allowed the word to be made manifest in their flesh or in their being. Darkness became light. Amen. So watch to expect fully, to look for, right? What are they looking for? The manifestation of the sons of God. Oh, hallelujah. Now, the word manifestation is apocalypsis, and it means the disclosure, the appearing, the coming. This is really why I, I, I'm reading this. Lighten the manifestation. Look, if you, it's, we, we hear the word manifestation, we hear the manifest, reveal, right? Manifest. But look, what, what are we trying? We're trying to lighten up, right? Trying to bring light. Are you with me? See, Jesus was the light of the world, is the light of the world, right? He turned around and said, you and I are the light of the world. But look, the prophet Isaiah said, hey, we're like a woman with child, we have this expectancy, right, to bring forth this child. But all we've brought forth is what? Messages. Wind. Gas, right? Winds of doctrine. Hot air. Are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting anything other than, look, the rest of that section says we've brought no deliverance to the earth. Right? I'm not trying to be critical in anything, and I'm not saying that, look, there's been no victories and that we haven't had things. But what God's really after is fullness, a harvest. It's, look, it's not sit in here, listen to a message, agree with it, and then the minute we get out of here, we can, you know, just express what's really in our hearts and minds, find out what's really important to us, right? Are you with me? Okay, here we go. To lighten, to manifest, be revealed, revelation, all right? Um, it also means to take the cover off. Watch. No man lights a candle and he does what? Puts a cover over it. Anybody want to tell me what the spirit of man is? The candle of the Lord. Isn't that what the Bible says? Proverbs, right? And God did what? Lighten us for purpose, didn't he? So, look, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. All right. You know what? I didn't write it down, but I'm going to, I read it. And so now I'm going to have to just hang on. Turn with me to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. I love this chapter, but I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Oh, verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words 
shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Here's where I really wanted to get. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming, right? The coming, the, uh, that's the word, the parousia, parousia, whatever, of the son of man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were what? Eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Look, they were just so busy living their own lives, doing their own things, that they didn't grow nor have that expectation, right? And the flood just came. But Noah was where? In the ark. Are you with me? He was doing his own, th they were doing their own thing. All right, here we go. Now I want to get to where I, I just, Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, Christians, right, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And he, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, okay? A light from heaven, or rays, luminous, right? Are you with me? Means to shine or make manifest, all right? What's the creation groaning for? A manifestation of his word. Manifestation of the sons of God, right? His word made flesh. That, look, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I mean, just think about that. He's not put the word in our heads only. He's put it in our lives to see it transform us, right? How many believe that we have the mind of Christ? Amen. Amen. How often do we use it? This is why he says put on the mind of Christ. Oh yeah, I thought we already had it. Are you with me? So he saw a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? So he saw this light, right? But I like to read this in Acts chapter 26. So Acts chapter 26. I'm almost done. No, <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm trying to contain myself really because if you could really if you and I could really lay hold of what he's showing us here the creation is groaning Amen. and you know I've quoted this semi quoted this over and over but I when I reread this I saw something, or it caught me in a fresh way, which is pretty cool, because I, I like it. Like, you know, like I was just talking to God and, and the whole works, and this verse came to me and how I always say it, and it just like apprehended me, it gripped me, and so therefore, you know, I started, I wanted to go read it and stuff, and then all of a sudden, you know, you know when you think you know a verse, 
you find out, you get to find out there's a little more to it. But watch this. This is so awesome. I hope you find it the same way. It, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to get you and I, look, I'm not, it does me no good to keep filling your head with knowledge because really the truth of the matter is it, it'll just go unless you retain a little bit or whatever. God is talking into our lives to change us, to transform us. The truth of the matter is he can do more with less. I mean, think about it in the Proverbs. There's people that have a lot, the Bible says, right? And they don't have anything. Right? But there's people that are poor that know how to, and they have everything. Are you with me? Okay, here we go. Now, here's the cool part. So what was Saul doing? He was eating and drinking and marrying and giving and marrying. He was living life, right? He was actually doing what he thought God wanted him to do, right? Am I right? Okay. And so on his way to Damascus to get people, he was going to haul them back to Jerusalem, bound up, right? And on his way there, he saw a light, didn't he? Now, I like this verse because it gives some more details. All right? The other verse didn't say this. At least I don't remember it. Wait, before I, let me go back just one second. I just want to make sure. Right? Uh, no. Okay. It doesn't give this detail. Here we go. Now look. At what? Midday. Did you hear that? Does that mean anything to you? In the middle of the day, right? It's like, um, it's the middle of the day, midday, right? Midday, I'll just say noon for you, you and I, right? We like to, you know, think of that as like the high point of the day, right? The sun is the brightest. Are you with me? And usually, you know, like, I don't know about you, but I like sunshine. I like sunshine when the sky is blue, the wind is calm, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just like, how about this, just right. And I equate that to everything is going fantastic in my life, it's exactly the way I want it. You know, okay, uh, maybe you get a little sweat once in a while or the little sunburn or whatever. But you get my point, right? Everything midday is as bright as the sun. You know, got a new job, got a new house, got a new, you know, mouse, blouse. Are you with me? Are you all right? Midday. At midday, now he's talking to the king, so he's, he's recounting what happened. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven. That is key. Are you with me? There's a lot of people that think they're lights, but the light, must be from the realm of the spirit. This is what causes the change. It's a light from heaven, not, you know, someplace over there. Because look, where's the sun? It's in the heavens, right? We can call that. It's in the sky. Heaven, sky, right? Are you with me? You agree with that? If I'm talking from a natural aspect, right? Sky, heavens, which by the way is limited because once you go out past that and you know, we don't know, and someday there will be a space colony and everything. But you get my point here. Are you with me? All right. It's midday. Everything's fantastic. But all, he's doing what he wants to do, right? And all of a sudden, in the way, in his journey, he sees a light 
from heaven. It's a light from the realm of the Spirit. Look, the creation is groaning, waiting to see that light from heaven. I think Paul's experience here is a picture of what, look, the creation's what? Groaning, in pain, ready to be what? Delivered. Right? And Paul didn't realize this, but he was in darkness. He didn't realize it at the time. He thought he was in daylight. Come on, watch. Watch. Philippians 3. What did he say? He said, I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I'm a Hebrew. I'm all these things. And he said, I count it as what? I came to a realization it was just darkness. It had no value in lighting up the house of God. The house is people, right? The body of Christ. I came to this realization that all these letters after my name or all these numbers, no matter, you know, I, all these numbers in my bank account, they don't mean a thing. He said, I saw a light from heaven. Are you with me? I saw a light at midday at the brightest point in life. I saw a light from heaven above. It's greater than anything. It's above. The name of Jesus is what? Above. And every time I talk about his name, his name is his what? Nature. And his nature expresses his, through his characters or his characteristics, right? He knew when to talk. He knew when not to talk. He knew when to move. He knew when not to move. See, we want to move by based on what we think we know. How many months did it take for Jesus to be born in a natural body? Nine months. You couldn't change that if you wanted to. Couldn't speed it up, slow it down. Saw a light. You know what's interesting? I, I, I'm a little sidetracked right here. Hang on one second. I, got, I have to read something, you know, in my... In Ecclesiastes chapter 5, it says, As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is, in, is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who makes all. Uh, let me read it in a translation that you can... Uh, you don't know where the wind blows, and you don't know how a baby grows in the mother's womb. Do you know how that baby grows in there? Because I'm telling you what, its beginnings and its endings... Wow, what a transformation. Are you with me? He took Paul, Saul, and turned him into Paul, right? Which means little, right? He humbled him, right? How did he humble him? He show him showed him a light from heaven on his journey in his life that was brighter or above the bright that's the cool part it was above the brightness of the sun amen in the same way you you and I don't know what God will do and he makes everything happen you know that, you know, I was reading in Ecclesiastes, you know how they always say there's nothing new under the sun? You know, it, it's like, wait, hey, this is new. No, this has already been here. You know, and we always, and I, I'm not saying it doesn't have an application. There's nothing new in this, under the sun. Cause, but the truth of the matter is if you really understand what he's really trying to say, at least I feel this way, is look, every time you read a story in the Bible, it's wow, we heard this before because it has the same theme all the time that God is circular, right? He's like a wheel. He's just 
bringing it around again and again and again, just like, watch, ha, ha, you know, I, I'm, I, I get it. I know how it works, the mechanics, but aren't you glad the sun comes up every day? Right? Around and round and round, right? Look, no, no, see, you didn't really hear what I said. Watch, they brought those little woolly sheep for sacrifices until the lamb came, right? And that sun keeps rotating around. Well, we rotate around, but you get my point. Until what? The light, the sun, that's brighter than the sun, Amen. grabs the attention of the creation that's groaning, just like Saul of Tarsus here, in his journey, doing his own thing, all of a sudden, a light, Amen. a bright light, right. a transformed light, a people of light. It has to be more than just a message to me. It has to be a living reality. And how it takes place, how it, look, gets revealed or uncovered, look, watch, a little by little. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. He's constantly working in and out. He's like a master uh, seamstress, right? He's weaving in, in and out of our lives, right? So he can bring about what he's purposed from the beginning. Amen? I, I, I don't know if I'm helping anybody tonight. Here we go. Back to Acts 20. Well, I'm back there. You probably didn't leave, but Acts 26. Right? Okay, here we go. But he said he saw a light. A light above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. In other words, he got clothed with the light from above. Look, it was midday. Everything was great. Sun shining, beautiful, right? You get, you get the analogy but a light from heaven. Wow. Amen. Something out of the realm of the spirit. Spirit is invisible, isn't it? This is why God put it in a people, right? This is why he put it in a person. This is why he has gathered. Look, this has been his sole intent when he made man, right? Let us make man in our image after the likeness, right? The nature and the character of the light. To be brighter than. Look, I, I can't help it, right? Like, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but look, whatever we think is fantastic, watch. And look, they were marrying and giving in marriage, right? They were eating and drinking. They were, they were having a wonderful time. But look, in the resurrection, they shall be like angels. They shall not die. There will be no marrying. And see, we like the brightness of the noonday see like some people have done this in the sectors of the church well you know then people shouldn't get married but Paul addressed that didn't he in Timothy he said forbade not don't 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 look 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 we're not stopping anybody from living if you do that, look, I, I can remember when, you know, I heard people say that when I was a little kid, well, they'll never get married. What, well, are you kidding? They're married and have kids now. Are you with me? People get religious. They think they understand things. But look, you'll never know what God's going to do. Are you all right? It's a light. It's brighter than the sun. Amen. Look, Saul of Tarsus was on commission with authority in his journey. And he thought it was from God. But God had a whole nother thing for him, didn't he? Amen. I know we quote this all the time, but like I, I've been munching on this for two days. A light from heaven 
brighter than the sun. Look, I told you, we can experience this in multi-levels and layers, right? Uh, uh, I told you this many times. One day I was just minding my own business, and all of a sudden I saw that same light from the realm of the Spirit, right? But look, God lets us experience those moments as we walk in our journey because he understands, he knows it's going to take a light of a people in fullness, the full manifestation, the full illumination, right? I'll use it lightly to fix. No, yeah, this is it. To answer the groan of the creation so it can become exactly what he had purposed from the beginning. I told you this, there has to be a firstborn child. You can't get away from it. And I don't know what, how many levels or tiers God will do. I don't know, he he might like a big family and it might take longer, right? Are you with me? He does things in layers. I don't know if that's true. How come Jesus is the firstborn of firstborns? How come he's the song of songs, right? He's the firstborn of the dead, right? Are you okay? He saw light from heaven. That's what we need. What's we need in our individual lives? That's what we need in our body life. And the reason, not only for us, because the truth of the matter is the creation's groaning. It's desiring to see the manifestation or the light that is from heaven that's above the brightness. It's greater. It makes you forget everything else. Amen? This is what God is after in our lives. In Psalms 104, it says, Who covers thyself with light as with a garment? Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain? Look, he said there was light was, what did he say? He said the light was shining round about me. Look, Jesus went up in the Mount of Transfiguration. And what? It said that his face showed, shined like a light and his clothes were even... Are you with me? His covering, his, his outer garment, his aura, his, watch this, his spirit, his nature, his characteristic, it just was illuminated. There were no questions, right? See, oh, oh he was real bright and shiny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's just really a description for you and I to understand, right? We understand if someone, you know, was really... You know, let's paint someone with shiny paint or whatever. Right, we get that, right? But no, what it's really trying to say to you and I is this. There was an image that illuminated the word, right? They saw him healing and and doing all kinds of stuff, but all of a sudden now they saw him in a full dimension that they had never, it was above the sun. It was above the brightness of everything he was doing under the sun, right? Right? This is what we groan for. This is what we cry for. It's fullness. It's the full stature, right? It's the full manifestation of the Christ in his people. Amen. Turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 16, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light... I think that's pretty cool. Look, another place it says, 
He is the light, and in him there is no what? Death. Darkness, right? Immortality, resurrection life, right? It is connected, synonymous with what? Light. But not just any light, is it? It's a light from heaven, okay? It's a light that's what? Above the brightness of the sun. Come on, seriously. Come on, let me, look, I, I, I'll just say this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to put it in words that we can understand. If, if God would clothe us, if we clothe us over with life, where we literally swat, where, watch, mortal became immortal, corruptible became incorruption, right? You, just you saying that will not change anybody's lives, will it? Most people wouldn't even believe it anyway. There has to be more, right? There has to be a light or there has to be a manifestation that's recognizable that look, look at Paul was just doing his own thing, right? See, you and I, really, we can live this in, in, in a sense, right? You can read the Word. Look, I, I like to do it all the time. Like, just this, just this thought of what I'm sharing tonight. Look, this whole thing has apprehended us, so we can read this Word and let it become light. That becomes life. Amen. It's not just a word. It's not just a thought. It's, just, it's life. Who, hath, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power and glory forever. Um, some of the other, I, I kind of like uh, some of the other translations. God is the only one who never dies. Christ dieth no more, right? So guess where we need to be in? Guess who needs to be in us? The two must become one because look, if he never dies, our lives are what? Hid in Christ. That's what has to be done, right? He lives in light so bright that people cannot go near it. You know what that means? No flesh can glory in his presence, right? <laughs> You think Paul was arrogant and high-minded and guilt and, and uh, of course he was. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. But what did it do? It knocked him to the ground. He fell to the ground. He, look, his name went from Saul of Tarsus to Paul, which means little, right? Humility humbled himself the bright light to become a light, it causes people to be humble, right? He gives grace to the humble, okay? No one has ever seen him. No one is able to see him. All honor and power belong to him. Amen? Revelation 21. I'm almost done. I made my point, I think. See, one of the things, we live in a time, and I think it's, you know, I mean, we're really, it's no different than any, any other time. We love to be entertained, right? People love to be entertained. Sports, whatever. I, I don't mind it either. But look, junk food for the soul and entertainment for the flesh, that diet, right, will never make us hungry for God. It just won't. We'll go through our routine of being religious, but that's different than being hungry for God. Amen? Now, oh, we've read these verses before. Verse 22, I'll read. And I saw no temple therein. He's talking about the city, right? Chapter 21 of Revelation. It's talking about the city. And what is the city? People, right? It's God's people. And I saw no temple therein. 
For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple in it. Now watch this, verse 23. And the city had no need of the sun. When Paul saw that light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, he no longer related to that from that point on. Truth of the matter is he became temporarily blind, didn't he? I think it's a good word for you and I. Once we see his light, we'll become blinded to the world, Amen. to the natural aspects of what goes on. And the reason is because is God, look, Jesus came, he healed the sick, he did all the things that we know he did in the three and a half years of his ministry. But what was the most important thing he did when he came? Are you with me? He became a light. He, he became a light that the world had never seen. No one had ever seen anybody raised from the dead permanently. Are you with me? Come on, Lazarus was raised from the dead. What are you talking about? No, I'm talking about permanently. A whole new dimension. It's like his resurrection, right? His resurrection was a life from heaven above the brightness of any other resurrection they had ever seen. And I'm not minimizing anything. What I'm trying to get us to understand, me understand, is this. There is a light from heaven that's brighter than the sun that has to come forth out of our being, not just as individuals, but more importantly, corporately, because the creation groans. It desires it. Amen. And the truth of the matter is the groan comes from the throne because God desires it. He desires a habitation for his presence. Amen. The city doesn't need the sun or the moon for light, right? The city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. See, our problem is, is I can't comprehend what that really is because I only understand or relate to. Look, we see things by the spirit. We do. I get that. Right? But most of my relating is natural. Right? I get hungry. I want to eat. I tell you, I tell you, this is, I, I'm a firm believer now, right? Fasting, you know, the whole thing about fasting is so you and I can understand what it means to be hungry so that you and I can relate what the Spirit is hungry for. See, I mean, come on. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights like I wouldn't make it in my naturalness, right? And at any time, he could have come on. At any time, he could have. He had the power, the ability. Look, this is what Christians, you and I, really need to get an understanding. Look, this is the problem with Ananias and Sapphira. They had the power within them, but they made a decision contrary to how they were to exercise that authority. Folks get religious and do what they want to do. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the lamb, and the lamb, look, who's the lamb? If you say Jesus, I give you partial credit. But if you say Jesus and his body, Christ, head and body, I give you full credit. Amen? You have to see yourself in him. You have to. And when I say see yourself, watch. Look, 
remember, remember in Moses' church, all the people had to give their looking glasses. What, what's, what's that mean? Their mirrors, right? All it was was high polished brass or bronze or whatever. It was, you know, they didn't have glass mirrors like you and I do, right? So they, what they do, they melted them all down and they made what? A laver, a big old, which by the way had no dimensions to it, which uh, that's a whole other story. But w the reason they did that was because that was the symbolization for where you get water baptized, right? And once you put the water in it, what were they to do? It created a great big what? Mirror. And when they looked into it, whose image did they see? Christ. Not themselves. Come on, remember the Lion King? Everybody remember that? He went over and he flopped himself down and he's like, thought his daddy forgot him and everything and he flopped down and what did he do? The Holy Ghost monkey, right? You see, I know you guys will get religious on me, but he said, look, you got to look deep within. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father and that's exactly what he saw. He finally saw the Father in him. Amen. Do you remember the image? He saw the image of his father. He had to look in the stars and see him there. Come on, are, are you with me? Look, the light of this city or the light of this people has to be from heaven and it has to be, watch this, brighter. It has to be above the brightness of the sun and watch this, and clothe us about. In other words, a Mount Transfiguration taking place in our lives. Remember when the three Hebrew children got thrown into the fire and it said there was one, a fourth one in the midst? He was what? Like, like veggie tails? He was real bright and shiny. It's the illumination of God within a people. Amen? Well, I just was munching on that and I just wanted to share it. The point being, it's more than a message. It has to become a reality in our lives. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. I, I think it's pretty cool if you went to Revelation uh, 22, and he talks about the basically the same thing, and um, he, he says in verse 3, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. They'll see his image, his mind is in them, amen, and there shall be no more night there, no need for the candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign. I like this forever and ever. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your light. Lord, it's day and night at the same time. But God, let the light of who you are be above the both. <laughs> that God, a light from heaven. Whew. grabs a hold of us and changes us, causes us to be blind to everything except for what you are doing. So God, that the manifestation of these sons fulfill your word, not only in the earth, but in all of your creation, bringing light and life to everything that needs it. Hallelujah. In this, God, you have chosen to do through your people, through mankind, who has been transformed. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, that you have marked us, you've chosen us for such a time as this. Glory to your name. And God, I pray tonight by your Spirit, that, God, our words will go forth out of our mouth as light, God, and touch our bodies, heal our minds. And God, we've been sealed for the day, the day of full redemption. Hallelujah. Every person that needs a touch of your hand, God, I pray through the Spirit of Christ that you not only strengthen them in the inner man, but, God, heal their bodies 
hear their, heal their souls. Hallelujah. That the glory of your name will be known in the earth. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you and we worship you. Amen and amen. Glory to your name, God.